Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're going through the Bible for the fourth time. We come today to the Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 1. So we will be covering the sixth chapter of the Song of Solomon. Get your Bible if you can, so that you can follow along with me. The verse by verse studies are also available for you at the Scripture Verse by Verse website found at the Bibleversebyverse.com. Not just this book of the Song of Solomon, but all 66 books of the Bible, four series going through all the Bible, verse by verse, are archived at the Bibleversebyverse.com. So all you have to do is choose, click, and listen. And all you need to bring is your Bible to the BibleVerseByVerse.com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Chapter 6, verse 1. Whither has thy beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither Hast thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? Now, these are ladies who have been talking to the woman in the story, who was a literal woman, the man that she loved was a literal man, Solomon, actually, and she's looking for this man who has somehow kind of disappeared. And she asked these ladies if they had seen her man that she loved so much. And if we read verse 1 again, Whither hast thou beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither has thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? I think these ladies might be giving the woman a bit of a hard time maybe even being somewhat sarcastic, because they say, where is your beloved? In other words, where is he? You're supposed to be the fairest among women. He's supposed to love you so much, so where is he? He's not around. And of course, I don't know, but there might be some jealousy here because that is the way it often is in the world. Sometimes the unsaved say to Christians when they are going through hard times, where is your God? Where is this God that you claim you love and that loves you so much? Where is the Savior? Why doesn't your God help you? Where is your beloved? And remember, the Song of Solomon is a picture of Christ and Christians. Verse 2, my beloved has gone down into his garden, to the beds of spices, to feed in the gardens, and to gather lilies. She not only knows where the man is, but in fact, back in chapter 4, she's the one who told him to go there. Verse 3, I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. So they love each other. And they trust each other. And she knows where he is. And other people cannot shake their confidence in each other. So the ladies, they're wasting their time, even trying. And it should be the same with us and Jesus. The Bible says that God knows those who belong to him. And that's a very comforting verse. Others may think that you are not a Christian because you don't believe exactly the way they do on every single issue. Well, they are, they are legalistic Christians. There are, I should say, legalistic Christians out there who will question your salvation if you don't follow their man-made rules. Others may think you're not a Christian because you haven't always behaved like a Christian. But God knows if you belong to him. God knows if you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. People can say anything they want to say. 
They can try to discourage you as a follower of Jesus Christ any way they want to, but they won't get very far because they can't shake your confidence in Christ, and they certainly can't shake God's commitment to you. So again, she repeats the words that she belongs to him and he belongs to her. They belong to each other and that relationship needs to be protected and anyone or anything that would seek to come between those two needs to be rejected immediately. I remember a few years back a very popular contemporary so-called Christian singer saying publicly that she enjoyed flirting with other women's husbands. And she, and she felt perfectly safe admitting that sinful activity. She thought it was so cute. She thought it was so modern. Yeah, and so did the lukewarm evangelical Christians who thought it was so cool and thought she was so funny. Oh, she's so hip. Man, can't even tell she's a Christian. That's how great she is. Wow. Yeah, and Sodom and Gomorrah were modern also. Nothing like creating strife within the bond between a man and a woman that belongs to each other and her claiming to be a Christian also and doing it. In so many cases, modern evangelicalism and modern evangelicals have profaned the sacred and have made light of that which is holy, all because they just think they're so cool, like she did. When she made that statement, giggle, giggle, snicker, snicker. I like flirting with other men's husbands, oh, with other men's wives. Oh, that's funny. Aren't we cool? We modern evangelicals. Oh, yeah. Sure are. Verse 4. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tizra, Terza, I should say, Comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. The man says, you've captured my heart. Only the devil and his emissaries try to disrupt a beautiful relationship like that. If you like to flirt with another woman's husband, then go flirt with some unsaved person. Then you both can go to hell together. Verse 5. Turn away thine eyes from me. For they have overcome me. Thy hair is like a flock of goats that appear from Gilead. He already said this earlier about her hair. And believe it or not, it was a great compliment. Verse 6. Thy teeth are like a flock of sheep which go up from the washing, of which every one beareth twins, and there is not one barren among them. Well, he already said this too, and again, it was a great compliment. And I guess we learn from this that it's good to repeat compliments when they are sincere. One manifestation of love is repeated praise and encouragement. And it is good also to praise God and to say the same words of worship and praise to him over and over again when it is sincere. God never gets tired of sincere praise. 8. There are threescore queens and fourscore concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her who bore her. The daughters saw her and blessed her. Yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. So in these two verses, the man is describing the uniqueness of this woman that he loves. She is one of a kind. Verse 10. Who is she who looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? He says of his lady that she shines like the dawn and she is beautiful as the moon and she is as bright as the sun and she is as wonderful as the stars and all these heavenly bodies give out different types of light but each one is unique and lovely 
in its own way, and that's this woman to this man. 11. I went down into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourished and the pomegranates budded. Before I was aware, my soul made me like the chariots of Aminadab. The woman says, I intended to go to the garden that is filled with nut trees, but I don't know what I'm doing there. That makes two of us, because I have no idea what these verses are talking about. <laughs> None at all. I just don't. It sounds like Babel to me. And if it is, it's the Holy Spirit-inspired Babel. It's recorded accurately, and I guess, if nothing else, we can conclude that when someone is in a deep state of love, like she was, or enamored with the Word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, like Christians should be, then that is where our focus will be, and we lose sight of the things around us and whatever importance they might have. 13. Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we might look upon thee. What will we see in the Shulamite? As it were, the company of two armies. Her companions wanted her to stay by them, but it was time to go to be with her husband. So the wedding is over. It's time to move on. Now she belongs to him. Now we belong to Christ. And we shouldn't let anyone or anything distract us from being with him and fellowshipping with him. Go to him. Enjoy his presence. He is your God. He is your creator. He is your savior. Next time, Song of Solomon, chapter 7. Remember, study the whole Bible with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's word. And also, when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, you can go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.